Are you content with your life? Recently, I read a uh, story about the University of Michigan who set out to discover who are the most content, happy people in the whole world. So they studied different people from all kinds of countries across the globe, and they discovered who is the happiest, most content people. Where do you think they found them? It wasn't here in the United States. It wasn't actually in any really powerful or wealthy or well-known nation. If you want to be one of these content people, then pack your bags and move out all the way to fabulous, well-known Nigeria. Now, if you don't know where that is, it's on the western coast of Africa. It's probably not the first place we would expect to hear to have the most content people. I mean, we don't know much about that nation. It's certainly not powerful or wealthy. You don't hear about it all the time in the news. Yet, these people are content with their lives. As this study went on, they found that the more wealth and power a nation amasses, they find that over time, really, they don't get much happier. They won't don't get more content, rather they just kind of stay the same. So it really kind of goes to show you the old adage that the more money, more power you have doesn't necessarily bring you more happiness. As we get into God's Word today, we're going to talk about what makes us content. And how about you? Would you say that you are a content person? When you got up this morning and you looked in the mirror and you were staring back at you, were you content with what you saw, or did you think, oh, not that person again? Tomorrow morning, when you get up and you go to work, or you go to school, are you going to be content going and getting into that same daily grind, that same daily routine? What about when you live at home? Are you going to be content living under that same roof with that same group of people that you always live in with day in and day out? I think most of us would say we want to be content. We want to be happy with our lives, but it's hard to do so. We're always thinking about, what if we had something else? What if we had just a little more money in the bank? What if we had a better house or a better car? What if we looked a little different? What if we were a little bit thinner or a little bit stronger or we felt a little bit younger? Or maybe if you're young, felt a little bit older. Maybe then we could be content. It's hard to feel that way. And it's especially hard in the society we live in because we all know we're constantly getting bombarded with that message from commercials and televisions that you need something more. You need to buy this product, then you'll be happy. You need to spend more on this or that, then maybe you'll be happy. As you watch television, you see all kinds of stories about people who are discontent with their family life or with the people around them. So the message is always just move on, find somebody else. When you hear that message going into your ears all the time, it's hard to feel content, isn't it? It's hard to feel like you're ever going to have enough. That's the problem with chasing after all those what ifs. They never really satisfy, do they? They always leave you longing for just a little bit more. Even when you think you have everything, you find out, well, maybe I've got to have something else. So how are we going to feel and be happy and content? God's Word speaks to that subject for us this morning. And if you look at the book of Hebrews, which was our epistle reading there on the back of your bulletin this morning, we see some of the keys God says to being content. In that text, he says to us, starting in verse 1, Let brotherly love continue. Down in verse 4, Let marriage be held in honor among all. Finally, in verse 5, Keep your life free from love of money. Perhaps that's a different message than we expected to hear. So we normally expect that if I focus on my own needs, if I focus on my own wants, then I'll be content. God tells us something different today. He says, focus on Him. Focus on other people around you. Then you'll be content. In fact, Jesus took it a little step further. He said to us today, He who exalts himself will be humble. He who humbles himself will be exalted. 
says. Don't focus on your desires, your needs. Focus on God. Focus on those around you. Now, how is it we can be content doing that? We take a look at those verses again from Hebrews. It says to us, starting in verse 5, Be content with what you have. For he has said, God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my help. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So there is God's secret. He says we can be content because he's never going to leave us or forsake us. He's always going to be our helper in life. But you know, as we, as we think about life, there sure are a lot of people and things that let us down, aren't there? There's a lot of people who have promised to always be there for us only to kind of fail us on those promises. Maybe you've seen it before. You had, a, you had a really close friend. You guys were the best friends in the whole world. And then over time, distance sort of separated you. And maybe now you just don't hear from that person any longer. Maybe sometimes you can think of some times in your family life when everything was perfect. Everything was going great. But then problems came along. There was conflict. And maybe those promises to love each other didn't always come through. Maybe there were some times you thought, I got all my money set, my job is secure, then something happens with the economy and everything changes, and you don't quite have that financial security you once longed for. How do we know God won't do the same thing? How do we know he's not going to be like everybody else or every other thing, the promises to always be there, but then falls away. Think about what kind of God we're talking about this morning. This is the true and living God who sent his son into the world for us. And that's significant. Because he sent his son not when we were all doing the right thing, not when we had all called for him to come down for us, or when we were perfect, or anything like that. You see, God's son came into the world for us. The scriptures say, when we are sinners, when we had done the wrong thing. He came down into this world for us strictly out of his love for us. He didn't wait for us to get it right. He wasn't somehow looking up in heaven and saying, okay, they did what I wanted him to, to do, so now I'll come down for him. He came down for us when we made mistakes, when we had regrets, when we had sin. This same Son of God willingly went to the cross for us. He died in our place, ensuring that we'll have life. That we have forgiveness of all the wrongs, all the regrets we have in life. See, when we look at that cross, whether it's here in the front of our church or maybe as we're driving around town seeing it on other churches, we have a guarantee of God's love. When we see that place where Christ went for us, we know without a doubt this God loves us more than we could ever imagine. So much he gave his own life for us. What do you think? Is that the kind of God who sounds like he's going to jump ship at the first sign of trouble? Is that the kind of God who sounds like he is going to leave our side even when we're not perfect? Not a chance. Instead, this God promises to stay by our side. Now, that's all well and good. We know God's not going to leave us, but can we be content with the things that he gives us? Well, think this morning, how many of you had breakfast today? How many of you know you're going to have lunch later on today? How many of you had a nice warm place to sleep last night, a roof over your head, all those things you need to survive? I imagine most of us probably had all those things as we sit here in this room. God provided those things for our lives, but his provision, his care for us runs so much deeper than just the things we need to survive God provides us with things that go way beyond that. God provides us with his forgiveness. We talked about that earlier. Christ went to that cross for us. God takes all those sins, all those mistakes, and wipes them away. He doesn't hold one single thing against us. Not only that, his son does not lie in a tomb dead somewhere. 
The Son is alive. Christ is alive for us. He rose from the grave, and He promises each and every one of us who believe in Him that we'll have life for eternity. Who else gives us those things? Who else would come and say, I don't count one thing against you? Who else or what else could come to us and say, you have eternal life. It's sure and certain. Only God can make those promises to us. But is that enough? Can we be content with that? And if we are, can we take the next step and be content living that life God has called us to. That tough life, he says here, where we put ourselves in the back burner and put others first. I think we can be content with that life, and I think in a lot of ways, we already are. Think about the things in your life that bring you the most joy and the most happiness. Is it when you open up your bank statement or go down to the ATM and you stare at how much money you have or may not have? Is it when you go around your house and you catalog all the things you got? Is it when you go around and say, oh, I remember when I bought that at Target? That was a good thing. Or is it the times you spend with your children and your family and your close friends? Do you receive the most joy in seeing all that stuff around you? Or is it when you hear that God loves you, that he gave his life for you? See, when we think about all those relationships we're in, could they really survive if they just revolved around us? Do you think your marriage would last a whole lot of time if it was only about you, never about the other person? Do you think you could really call yourself somebody's friend if all you wanted was something out of them and nothing for you? See, we know it's true. And God's Word backs that up for us this morning. It tells us, don't worry about yourself, because God's got to be taken care of. In fact, his word tells us today plainly that if your life is totally revolved around you, then it's revolving around the wrong thing. That's why God today calls us to let brotherly love continue. He's letting us know, hey, that kind of love is better than love for self. He says, hold marriage in honor. Stick with that person you got married to. Because that kind of love is better than jumping from person to person or fantasizing about people on TV or on the internet. He says, be free from the love of money. Because, yeah, money's a great tool, something God gives us to use. But it can't buy you everything. It can't make you truly content. God calls us to something different this morning. So I want you to use this as a challenge. I'm going to give you a little homework as you leave here this morning. This week as you're living out your lives every single day, I want you to think about those moments where you do something for somebody else and maybe you don't get anything at all in return. No thanks, no gratitude, no money, no anything. See if those times really are fulfilling. If you can be content doing those things for somebody else. I think if we really think about it, we'll realize we are. We're already in a lot of ways doing it. When you raise your kids, you don't get a paycheck for it. And you don't necessarily get a whole lot of thanks for it. But you do it because you love them. Because you want what's best for them. When you're living in marriage with your spouse, you do nice things for them, not always because you get something in return, just because you care about that person. You want what's best for them, and you want to live in peace with them. Even if you, if you go to work and you live amongst other people, or you're at school, or wherever it might be, you, we all have that desire to want to live at peace with each other. And we know that comes not on focusing on ourselves, but in being kind to other people. Not being the gossip around the workplace, not stabbing other people in the back. It comes as we show that love God talks about here in His Word. See, we know we can be content living the life God has called us to live. Because we see it all the time already. And we trust that we can be just like the book of Hebrews tells us today. We can be confident. We can say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what command do me. We will not fear today or as we leave this place and go out and live our lives. Because what do we know? We know God has taken care of us.